this video, we're going to take a look at the insert statement. And the insert statement is obviously how you're going to get data into your database. It's not the only way to get data into your database. There's a couple of other tools that Oracle use for, uses for stuff like bulk loading. There's, oops, there's a tool called import. And in later versions of the database, Oracle has created something called Data Pump, which gives you a lot of really sophisticated ways of getting data into your database. But these are really for bulk imports, or bulk inserts, I should say. The insert statement is what you're going to use on a regular basis to get data into your database. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the insert statement, and the main reason is, is that you're probably not going to write a lot of insert statements as part of your daily SQL work. You're probably going to have some kind of application, like a forms application or a JDeveloper application, that's going to do most of the inserts for you. You're probably not going to write a lot of inserts on a day-to-day -day basis as part of your development or DBA work, but it's still important to understand um, how the insert statement works. There's three basic forms of the insert statement. There's one where you specify all of the columns. That's the easiest form of the insert statement. There's one where you specify some of the columns. You don't have to specify all of them. You can specify some of them. This makes it a little more complex because you have to actually then list the columns that you're inserting into on the, uh, the SQL statement itself. And the third way is where you do an insert as a select statement. Where you select information from other parts of your database. It could be from another table, could be another sets of tables, could be from another view, could be a combination of a lot of different things. And you want to build a table and you can do inserts as a select statement. The two major forms of the insert statement, there's no where clause. Of the four major commands, that we use um, in SQL on a regular basis. What do we have? We have select, we have update, we have insert, and we have delete. I'm going to write delete here, and insert. Insert is the only one that doesn't have a where clause associated with it. And that makes sense, because we're inserting data. When we're deleting data, we can qualify what we want to delete through a where clause. Same thing with update. And obviously, when we're doing a select statement, we very rarely want to grab every single row in a particular table. We want to qualify what we're looking for. So we'll have some kind of where clause. The two major ways of doing an insert, there's no where clause. We can have a where clause on the select statement that goes along with this third form of the insert. But again, the where clause is really associated with the select statement. It's not as associated with the insert statement. It's associated with select. So I'm going to hop into SQL Developer now. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I like working with SQL Developer. It's free, and it has a lot of really cool things on it that allows you to see what's going on underneath the covers, which, again, I think is very important. You don't want to rely too much on a graphical tool. But if we have all of that, let's say we want to start inserting information into this uh, music table. And this music table is just like my CD collection. So you can see we have three rows in there now. Let's say I want to insert a new row. So I'm going to go in here into my worksheet, and I'm going to let's resize this so it's a little easier to see some of the things there. Insert statement, pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to insert into. I'm going to specify who I'm going to insert into. I'm going to do hr dot music. If I'm going to specify every single column. I don't have to specify the columns here in the insert statement. I just have to make sure that they line up with the order of the columns that I'm inserting into. So what does my music table look like? My music table, let me go over here, we look at columns. We've got artist last name, artist first name, title, and rating. So if I insert values that line up with these columns, I don't have to specify anything else. So I have to use the word values to say what I'm going to put in there. And if I do it in order, I can say Beatles comma, the, comma, let's say, Abbey Road, and I'm going to give that a 10. So you can see these each line up with the column names, right? Last name, first name, title, rating. Last name, first name, title, rating. So I go in there, I say I want to insert that guy, one row inserted. If I look at the data now, it doesn't show up yet, I have to refresh it. There's the Beatles, Abbey Road. 
Let's say I have a CD where that I haven't listened to yet. I edited my collection, but I uh, I don't have a rating for it yet. I don't know what to give it. I don't have to specify all of the different fields. So let's say I want to insert. Uh, let's say rubber sole. But again, I haven't listened to it yet. I don't have a rating. I can't run the statement like this because I only have three fields specified here and, uh, and I have four columns inside my database. So if I try to run it, it comes back and says not enough values. There's two ways I can get around this. If I don't have a value in there, I can specify a null as my rating column, assuming that I don't have a not null constraint on that particular column. I can specify null there, but let's say I don't want to specify these at all. I just want to put in uh, values for the actual columns I'm going to have information for. If I do that, what I have to tell Oracle in the insert statement is how each one of these lines up to the columns inside my table. So I have to specify artist last name, comma, artist F name, and title. So you can see inside my insert statement, I actually had to specify the columns and how these line up for each one of the columns. So I'm going to hit run there, and you can see one row inserted. I go back to the data. I can then requery the data. And you can see there's rubber sole with a null value in it. I don't have to specify these in any particular order. If I don't have the columns here along the top, I do have to specify them in order. But I can change these around. Let's say I want to put title first. So I'll put title first here, and then artist last name and first name. So then instead of rubber sole, I'm going to put in SGT Pepper for Sergeant Pepper, comma, last name, first name. So I can change these around. I run this again, and you can see one row inserted. I go back to music, I do a refresh, and there's Sgt. Pepper. Enter with a null. The third type of insert statement that we can look at is when we're going to we want to pull information from other tables or views inside my database and insert it into my table. So let's say I have this music table. I also have this artist table. Let's say I want to pull these artists and I want to insert them into my music table. I can go ahead and do that too, and it's not limited to just tables. I can pull them from views. I can do a whole bunch of manipulation where maybe I want to do a sum or an average or you know something like that, and I want to do all of these fancy things and then insert it into another table. I can do all of those things. I'm going to explore some of those complicated type queries in my uh, select videos. But for now, just understand that I can pull information from, let's say, the artist table and get it into music if I want to through an insert statement. So how would I do that? Well, I want to insert into HR Music, and let's get rid of all of this other stuff here. And we can actually use a select statement. We can say select artist F name, oops, sorry, L name, artist F name from HR artists. Now, if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error. But you can see how the, the, the basic format of this looks, right? I'm going to select this statement. I'm going to pass what's returned from the select statement into this insert statement. If I try to run it like this, I haven't specified any values for my title or for my rating. So Oracle isn't going to know how to handle it. So if I try to run this like this, it says not enough values. I don't know what you're trying to insert here. I also can't insert a null because my uh, title field which is the third column in my table, I have a not null on. So if I can try to if I try to do null null here, I now have four fields lined up with the four columns that make up my music table. The still is going to give me an error message because I got a not null on the title. So if I try to run it again, cannot insert null into that. So for these guys I'm going to have to put in some kind of temporary value because I don't have uh, um, a CD that's associated with my artist table. So I'll just put in something like temp for now. I try to run the statement again, and now I get four rows inserted. 
So now if I hop back into Artists, or hop back into Music, excuse me, uh, I have all of these ones in there. And you can see there's Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr with the temp values. So I was able to run an insert statement where I'm actually pulling information from other parts of my database and get it into um, my table pretty easily. So those are the three basic forms of the insert statement. One where you specify all the columns, one where you specify some of the columns, and one where you use a select statement to grab information from other parts of the database to put in your table. Again, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all of the different permutations of insert because most of the time you'll run it through some kind of applications. But it's still important to know how the insert statement works so that you can work with it effectively.